welcome to this new series, Building Blocks of Makeup. In this series, I'm going to dedicate one video to each part of makeup application. Now, only in this video am I going to give this long introduction and tell you about it, but from here on out, each one is going to just dive right in. I'm gonna walk you through all of the tips and tricks that I personally have learned along the way of how to apply foundation, concealer, blush, bronzer, but I'm also going to talk in each video about finding your perfect shade, your perfect formula, etc. So I hope that you find this really helpful, whether you are a beginner at makeup or you are somebody who is a longtime pro at applying makeup, hopefully you will pick up some tips and tricks along the way. If you're new here, be sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified of any upcoming videos, especially in this series. Now let's get started. This first makeup building block I find to be, I think, the most important. If you're applying makeup, we want to start with a good foundation. But even before we talk about foundation, we need to talk about the foundation for the foundation, and that is our skin. So proper skin prep is number one most important. You need to make sure that your face is not only cleansed and toned, but properly moisturized and protected. Yes, adding sunscreen is so important. Even if you're not planning to spend the day out at a park or at the pool, you need to be applying sunscreen. I will link up here my recent skincare routine so you can know how I prep my skin on a daily basis, but that is super important. The other part of that skin prep is making sure that your skin is exfoliated and hair free. I know that sounds a little scary, and some of you might be real adverse to the thought of getting rid of all of the peach fuzz on your face. Now I did the Paula's Choice 25% AHA plus 2% BHA. This is my favorite skin exfoliator. It is a mask that you just do once a week and this, oh my goodness, it makes my skin so smooth. You can feel and see a difference. So I do that once a week. And then to keep my face hair free, my favorite tool, is the Flawless Touch. This I have been using for years. I did a video on it way back when. If I can find it, I'll link it below. This is that battery operated face shaver and this is so easy to use and it won't irritate your skin. This is not going to trim your hair as close as if you were using like a razor on your face. That's a whole nother topic for a whole nother video. But the combination of these two really make a difference in how foundation sits on my skin. Next, let's talk about primers. If you've watched many makeup videos, you will see most people, I would say nine out of 10, put on a primer every time they use foundation. I am not one of those people. First of all, I want less layers on my skin. So I feel like if I don't need to add a primer, I don't want to. But secondly, I'm one of those that actually believes that a good foundation should not need a primer to function well. So if you have a horrible foundation and you keep trying new primers to make that horrible foundation work, maybe you should consider trying a different foundation and you might not even need those primers. Now, a primer can have a place to enhance or further the benefits of that foundation. And there are a couple that I actually feel like do that. One is the Milk Pore Eclipsing Primer. This I will use just in the summer. Not only does it help minimize the look of pores, but it does help with oil control. But I don't need that extra oil control all year long. This primer, not only is it super cooling on the skin, but it's just a super thin, lightweight texture. And I do feel like this is one of the few that keeps my pores looking minimized even after foundation has been put on after. But when I use this, again, I only use it in the areas where I have larger pores and oiliness. Two primers that I actually even like myself, even though I have more combination skin, but I feel like these are really great, especially if you want more of a glowy finish to your skin. One is a new one by Bare Minerals, Prime Time. This is the Hydrate and Glow Primer. This is really nice. It is not oily. It does add maybe a little hydration, but it doesn't break down my makeup and it goes on just with a really nice, it's a very thin consistency and the glow is very soft and subtle. There's no sparkle, 
but it just really goes onto the skin nicely and foundation works really well over the top of it. Another new one that I've been testing out, I don't, yes, maybe I've used this in a video, but this is the Natasha Denona Hygiene Skin Glass. This is a very unique product. You can kind of almost use this in place of moisturizer if you are a combination girl like I am. This one has more glow, but it's a thinner weight formula. And actually, I think this one is more of a water-based formula, but you can see it just adds a really nice, beautiful glow to the skin. So it's even a little more glowy than the Bare Minerals one, but both of those really work well with multiple different types of foundations. And I do feel like those make a difference over the course of the day. So primer in my book is optional, but if you're gonna apply a primer, you're gonna apply it after sunscreen, before foundation. And now when we're considering foundation, there are a few things to consider when you're choosing your perfect foundation. The first thing is formula and coverage. So formula, if you have dry skin, you want to generally look for a foundation that is hydrating, dewy, glowy, or you can do something that has more of a natural finish. If you're somebody with normal skin, you could do a dewy foundation or a matte foundation. If you're somebody like me who's more combination oily, your best bet is probably going to be going for a formula that is more matte or natural matte. You can do a dewier foundation like I do, but you're just going to have to probably powder a little more with those foundations. Now formula is one thing, but also coverage level. So coverage level can vary from sheer coverage to super full coverage. And you've probably heard people say, oh, mature women should not use full coverage because it's too heavy. You're not gonna hear this mature woman say that. And here's why. I feel like if you go for a fuller coverage foundation that is the right formula, it gives you so many more options. If, however, you choose a sheer coverage foundation and there are times when you need more coverage, you're going to have to get that coverage somewhere. And it's either from adding tons more concealer all over your face, or you're going to find yourself going out and buying a fuller coverage foundation. So I generally say, Go for a foundation that meets the needs that you have the most often. If you have perfect skin most of the time, then go for a sheer coverage. However, if you have a lot of redness, you have larger areas that you feel like need more color correction, go for a medium to full coverage because as we'll discuss here and then I'll show you, there are many ways that you can reduce the coverage of a full coverage foundation when you want to. And one of those ways is you can actually just mix a little bit of your regular moisturizer or your sunscreen with your foundation and apply it that way and that will sheer out the coverage. Another way comes with how you apply it. I'll share that in a moment. Now, after you've chosen your perfect formula and level of coverage. The next thing is color. And I get so many questions about this. How do I find, how do I pick the perfect color? You need to know your skin's undertone. How do you know that? There are two main ways that you can figure this out. So first way and the most popular way is you want to look at the veins on your wrist and you want to see if they appear to you to be more blue, purple, more green, or if you see a combination of both. If they appear more blue-purple, that means you have cooler undertones to your skin, meaning you have more pink undertones. Even if you're super fair, there are undertones to your skin that you might not be able to see, but your veins will tell you. If your veins appear more green, then you have more yellow undertones to your skin. If they're green with a little more depth, then you may have more olive undertones to your skin. If you see both blue and green, then you are a neutral undertone, which means more peach. Now, once you have determined your skin's undertone, you need to determine the depth of your skin tone. All right, this is where it can get a little tricky, especially if you are a short haired girl like me. It is super important to choose the right depth of foundation color if you have short hair. It's kind of important if you have long hair, but you can disguise it more. You can wear a slightly darker foundation. I know a lot of people say, oh, I'd rather wear a slightly darker foundation, give myself more color. You can do that if you have long hair. 
If you have short hair and you put on a darker foundation, it's gonna look like you're wearing a mask. It's gonna be so obvious. So the depth of your skin tone being fair, light, light, medium, 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 tan, tan, deep. Okay, those are kind of the general categories. So you're going to, as you're shopping for your foundation, you're going to look for a foundation color description that matches those two things. Now, there are a couple of foundation brands, MAC Cosmetics and House Labs that I know of right off that actually do kind of the opposite, but everybody else kind of follows the rules. In general, if you see a foundation color that says cool, that means it's gonna work for those of you who have pinker undertones. If it says neutral, those of you with peach, if it says golden, yellow, there you go, okay? There are a few foundation brands that are starting to incorporate more olive tone shades. So that will help you kind of choose the proper color and then of course you're looking at the depth of color. Now, as I mentioned, MAC and House Labs, they're the opposite, so. MAC and NC Neutral Cool is actually one that I would want with my yellow undertones. Yeah, I know, that's, that's a topic for a whole nother video. But in general, the rule is cool, pink tones, warm, yellow, that would be yellow undertones, neutral, those peach, and those run the whole range of skin tones from fair to deep. Now, after you've chosen what you think is the perfect color, the final test to find out if it really is, is to apply it to your face or your neck. It is to apply it to your neck. And this, again, talking about those of us with short hair, this is when it's super important. Your neck is the part of your body that does not get any sun because it's usually shaded by <laughs> your chin. So that's a good thing. But generally, the color of your neck is going to be a very different color than your face. Also, when this can come into play is if you're somebody like me who does sunless tanner, I don't often tan my face because I'm regularly exfoliating and I feel like I'm constantly having to reapply it to my face. So I just apply sunless tanner from here down and then I alter my foundation shade to match my neck. So as you are applying your sample of foundation or the foundation that you purchased, apply it to your neck, but don't just leave it in a full swatch and I'll show you this, but you need to fully blend it out and then take a look in natural daylight, in bright light, and see if it disappears. If it disappears into your neck color, then you know you have chosen the right shade. <laughs> if you're somebody who does sunless tanner like I do, or maybe in the summertime you're outside a lot and you actually do have quite a difference in your shades of foundation that you need throughout the year, I would recommend picking up a lighter shade for your winter that would match you in the winter and a darker shade that matches you at your darkest point. And then once you have those two shades, you can mix those two all year long to get your perfect shade of foundation. I know it seems like a big investment up front, but remember it's two bottles that you're using and generally it's going to last you probably twice as long. So it is a bigger investment up front, but it is going to help you really dial into your perfect shade. Now, if you don't want to do that, you can also find, I believe LA Girl, this is in kind of the concealer version, but LA Girl does have a white foundation mixer that you can add to your foundation to lighten it. They don't have one to darken it, which kind of drives me nuts. NYX used to, they don't anymore. So you can find a few products like this that are not supposed to change the formula of the foundation, but just the color. But in general, if you find a foundation you love and you have those shifts of color differences, it's usually worth your while just to purchase two shades and then you can always have your perfect shade on hand. Now in the description box below this video and the forthcoming videos, I will list a few of my other favorite foundations that I am really loving right now at the moment that I would recommend, but I don't want to make these videos too product focused. I want them to be much more 
technical focus and kind of focus on how to apply the products you have. So I do have some updated videos coming of my top favorite foundations, concealers, all of that. So stay tuned. But now without further ado, let's jump into foundation application. I'm going to start by first putting my foundation on this metal palette. This is from JCAT Beauty very inexpensive, but I prefer using a metal palette like this. This is what you use as a makeup artist because you can sanitize it fully. But also I prefer using this versus the back of my hand because while yes, there is an advantage of putting it on the back of your hand and warming it up first before putting it on your skin, you will use two to three times the amount of product when you do that because this is skin and the skin is absorbing part of that product before it gets to your face. And when you're using an expensive foundation like I'm gonna use today, this is the Dior Forever Matte Foundation, I don't like to waste product. Now to match my neck, as I discussed in the earlier portion of this video, you can see my neck is a slightly darker color than my face, but I know just from experience, it's not quite as dark as my deepest shade I own in this foundation. So this is 2.5W. I am going to mix in a little bit of 1W to find my perfect shade. So I'm gonna start off with one pump of the 2.5 and you do have to be careful. Oh, that's just like a half a pump. I need actually a new bottle of this. And then I'm going to put in just maybe a about, oh, a little, kind of a little smidge like that. And I can always add more. And I'm going to just mix that with my finger. You can also use a toothpick to mix it. And then therefore you're not getting any product absorbed on your finger. I'm going to, we'll do a little test. So this is how you want to test your foundation color. Don't leave it full on like this. You want to mix it in to your neck. And if it disappears, which I feel like it did, then you know you have a pretty good match. So next, I'm going to take what's on my hand because again, I don't want to waste that product. And I prefer to just dot it on a section of my face at a time and work that section with my brush first before smearing this all over my face because it can kind of dry too quickly and it depends on your formulation of foundation that you're using. But I know that this foundation, because it's a matte foundation, it does set pretty quickly. So I like to work in sections and this brush is my all-time favorite brush for almost all foundations. This is the BK Beauty 101 brush. This is the travel size, and then I also have it in the full size. There's a slight little difference in feel of the bristles, but overall, they're pretty much the same brush, but you can see how dense these bristles are. So that has given me the fullest coverage just in one kind of thin application. So a brush, because you're using it dry and this is a synthetic fiber brush, it's not absorbing too much of the product. Now, as I talked about at the beginning, why I prefer using a full coverage foundation is because you can adjust more easily, I feel like, the coverage of a full coverage foundation. You can get the full coverage if you want it, but you can also dial back that coverage for days that you might not need as much coverage. And in order to do that, you need to change up your tool or you can mix in a moisturizer. But today I'm just gonna show you the difference that a tool can make by how you apply it. So this brush, you probably don't see real often, but this is a duo fiber brush. And what that means is that there are longer bristles and shorter bristles, and it's very, kind of thin at the top. And so what this does is it provides kind of a very lightweight application of products. I love a duo fiber brush personally for applying cream or liquid blushes, but it's not my preference for using foundation. However, if you were to use this with foundation, it would give you a much sheerer coverage. The other way and more popular is the damp beauty sponge. There are so many beauty sponges on the market. And as you can see, this started off about the same size as this. So when you dampen it, it does expand. It becomes very soft. And that slight little bit of moisture in there is going to shear out 
the foundation slightly as you apply it to your face. Now, what that is also going to do though, a sponge is actually going to absorb a little more product. So just like from the back of your hand, you are going to use a little more product when you're using a beauty sponge. So let me just show you, I'll do this on my forehead. So I'm going to, again, I'm gonna go ahead and dot this on first, just so that I kind of get a little more coverage to start with. And then I'm going to just, you wanna like press it into the skin and then you can also kind of work it out when you get to your hairline, but press. You can also roll it in areas where you want more coverage. And then I like to actually go right in with the sponge in areas if I wanna add a little more coverage. But this is a very popular tool for those, especially with drier skin and you like to have a slightly more sheer coverage. Again, you can still build up the coverage, but this is a way to prevent too much foundation from getting into deep lines and wrinkles. Now you can do a combination of brush and sponge, and that's kind of what I like to do. I'll apply the foundation, and then if I feel like it got heavy over any lines, you can go over with a damp beauty sponge and it will remove the excess product. So a damp sponge is going to make sure that your skin does not have too much makeup on it. So there it is applied. You can see it still gave pretty good coverage. In person, I can still see a few spots here and there that are not covered and therefore I know it's not full coverage. Okay, let's go ahead and get foundation on the rest of the face here. So I'm just going to go back in and you'll see I'm kind of staying away from my nose because I'm going to show you a trick for the nose area. Now, as I discussed in the beginning, if you're somebody who prefers not to remove peach fuzz on your face, it is helpful when you're applying foundation to go down because that will help smooth any peach fuzz that is on the surface of your skin. If you use one of these buffing brushes or you even take this brush and start going like this, it's going to make those hairs stand out. So if you prefer not to shave any of the peach fuzz or any hair off of your face, you're going to want to pay particular attention to how you apply your foundation. Again, just going down lightly and that will make sure that the hair is laying down smoothly. Now, if you're somebody who really struggles to get makeup to adhere and stay on the tip of your nose, you may have tried all the good primers, foundation primers out there and you still struggle. If that is you, then I want you to give this trick a try. This is the MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot. I'm using Soft Ochre because this is more closely, this matches the undertone of my skin, which is more yellow. They have Painterly, which is more pink. They have deeper shades as well. So what you wanna do is just take a very light amount of this. You can also use a brush. I just use my finger because I'm lazy. <laughs> and I'm going to apply a very, very small amount to the bridge of my nose right here and to the end. And I will tell you, I have times throughout the course of the year and I don't really know why. It's usually not if I've changed skincare, it can be weather related or what, I don't know. But I will have times where even my favorite foundations just will not stick to the end of my nose. And it's really frustrating. Now, because I tend to have clogged pores more often, I don't do this all the time. But if you are needing your makeup to last really well, or if you're really struggling, I would recommend giving this a try. You can also use just a regular eyeshadow primer. That works almost as well, but I find there's something in particular about this that really <laughs> makes a difference. The first person I ever saw do this trick was Nakia Joy. And this was a couple of years ago and I was so blown away, tried it myself and it totally worked. Okay, so you wanna obviously let that sit down and then we're gonna go in now and I'm gonna just go straight from my brush and tap this on. 
and then blend into the rest of my makeup. And you want to tap really, you don't want to swirl on this because we want to keep that primer in place. Isn't that amazing? It's, it's a wonderful trick. And so if you struggle to get your makeup to adhere to the tip of your nose or stay there all day, give this a try. Now, I'm sure many of you are saying, surely you've missed one tool. What about our fingers? Your fingers are a wonderful tool if you don't wanna use a sponge or a brush, but my preference is not to use my hands as much unless I'm in a really big hurry. I prefer using my hands with more of a lighter foundation, like a tinted moisturizer. I do love using my hands. With a more fuller coverage foundation, I feel like a brush or a sponge distributes it more evenly and helps me not get any clumps or any areas that have heavier coverage than others. So if you've been applying your foundation with your hands and you find that you've got kind of unevenness in your coverage, you may give a brush or a sponge a try or apply it with your fingers and then go in with your damp sponge in just the areas where you feel like it's a little heavy and just tap over those areas. Now that we have our foundation on, I'm gonna go back into this hairline area and I'm just gonna add a little extra coverage because again, this is where I used the beauty sponge and I did not get quite as much coverage there that I wanted. And then obviously you do want to blend into your hairline, but if you've got blonde hair like I do, or gray or white or platinum, you're gonna wanna be careful how you blend it into your hairline. So I just like to take a clean side of my finger and blend it in. If you go in with your brush and you have light colored hair, you're gonna see that, even dark colored hair, you're gonna see that foundation in your hair. And I find this with short hair, you'll know you have to be a little bit more careful with things like this. And I'm going to do the same thing around my sideburn area here. Now, under here, let's go back. I'm going to take what's left kind of on my palette. And I am going to now blend this down onto my neck. And as we talked about, it's super important that your face matches your neck. The other spot you need to pay attention to is your ear. Sometimes your ear, if you're doing sunless tanner and you forgot to do your ears, you may need to brush a little foundation. And again, you're not going in full on, like full coverage on your ear. Just brush your brush over your ear and that will be enough to make everything look seamless. Now, the last thing I wanna show you and, and call out is you'll notice I did not apply my foundation under my eyes. And that is because as we get older, we want less and less layers. And I know I'm going to need concealer. So I would rather just use concealer rather than having foundation, color corrector, concealer, powder all under my eyes. So the less layers, the better. Now I'm just going to take my finger and tap over my pores. You can also take your brush and do this, but this is kind of a final step I like to do. Again, you're just wanting to make sure you don't have any makeup collecting <laughs> in your lines and wrinkles. And then you want to give this time to set before you go in with any powder. So we've applied our foundation. Now we need to add some concealer. 